I'm Cy Wakeman and I'm a drama researcher and today I'm here in Omaha, Nebraska, my own backyard. Leaders have driven from all over the state, all over the region just to be here and I'm so excited to share the message about reality-based leadership with all of them. These folks got together and brainstormed how they could collaborate and have a huge day of learning for not-for-profits all over the state. Please help me welcome. Thank Tyler. you, Jim. So excited to be here. We're gonna talk about drama today. I hope to make you a bit more of an employee whisperer today so that you can use both what we know in evidence in psychology and what we know about our brains and what we know about a modern form of leadership that actually works that you can use instantly. So that's what I'm here excited to talk to you about. But we're gonna talk a lot about drama. I wanna know what flavors of drama you have in your workplace. When you're home drinking at night, <laughs> chocolate milk, people, chocolate milk and tea, what are your sources of drama? Hands up. Tell me what flavor your drama comes in. When there's a lack of trust or a lack of empowerment, to me I see a lot of drama gets created behind that because you feel like, wow, I'm, I'm here doing this thing and you know, if you don't trust me to do that, now I'm creating my own story. When I had somebody who said, uh, my boss is a micromanager, I said, stop judging, start helping. Well, my boss is a micromanager. What do you want from your boss? I want them to trust me. I said, then go to your boss and ask, what are three things I could do that would enhance your trust in me so that you would feel as though you could check in less often? Now, do you hear the difference than the confrontation of, I have something to discuss with you, I think you're a micromanager, and I would like you to change your management style? One just punches the ego right in the face, doesn't it? I'll show you microman, what are you hiding? <laughs> The other bypasses the ego and says, I'm totally accountable. What can I do to enhance your trust for me? At what point do I have to take accountability for my feelings as a manager? Because I know that I'm not always great and I will make decisions out of ego a lot of times. And so to say that like change can't happen and that this is our reality when sometimes it may not be. Nice, I love where you're going with that. At what point do I take you know, accountability for my part. I tell my staff, you guys, I screw this stuff up, but only daily. I need to apologize to you, I have misled you. I didn't lead you well. I did some reflecting. I wish I had not sympathized with you and let you off the hook. I wish I had called you up to greatness. It shows them, right, that self-reflection is expected and accepted. If I can just like lift you guys up one level where people can be happier and more successful, and that ripples through our wonderful state and our region, our communities, I am one grateful girl. So keep doing all the good work you're doing. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I am just constantly amazed how hungry people are for a modern leadership philosophy, one that actually works with the diverse teams that they're leading and tools they'll actually use. It's exciting and it's exciting to help not-for-profits take resources away from drama and put it into all the great work they do for clients and for animals in our community. It was just a wonderful day. We love you too.